Oh, I've been so bummed about my pre-orders recently. I just need something to cheer myself up. I know, I'll open an order from Midtown Comics. Hey there, today I have an unboxing video and in this video I'm gonna open up an order that I placed from Midtown Comics. This order was placed back uh, in early May 2022 and the order really was centered around uh, a lot of like comic book buzz and news at the time and it's a really good, I think, contrast to kind of what I had been doing with the pre-orders that I just recently opened where I was just kicking myself uh, when I just feel like you can always go back and find comic books if you're resourceful enough. Uh, you know, it doesn't always have to be online, but anywhere that you want to be able to find books. Um, if you are dedicated to the hobby and dedicated to the craft and dedicated to hunting down comic books, you know, we live in a great time with, where there's so much information and so many different ways to find books. Um, and so this will be just a, an example of comic book news kind of coming out around like that April, May time period. And you'll start to see some of the books uh, that I picked up based on some of that news where I just, it was like one book after another on Midtown where I was like, okay, um, I heard about this. I heard about that. And I was able to find um, some good books there. And as always with Midtown, it's really not necessarily about price or availability. It's more, can I trust that these books are going to be delivered to me in at least that 9.4 near mint condition or above without them getting damaged in transit. What's interesting about this order too is it didn't arrive in the standard, you know, midtown cardboard box. Um, it, it came in this sort of like square box. I believe that the reason that it did is because it also includes some free comic book day books. Um, and so that was one of the things that I did around the time was I wanted to grab a few books that maybe had some association to some news that had come out at the time, but then also, because I don't really have any LCSs near me, I wanted to go and also add some some of the free comic book day books to my collection as well. And, and a couple of reasons I do that. Number one, uh, there are some books from time to time where there's a first appearance that kind of sneaks in there, uh, or it's kind of a little bit of a story a preview or maybe a little bit of a prelude to a bigger story or an event and kind of want to flip through it, read it a little bit, check it out. Uh, the other big reason I like uh, free comic book day books is they're great to practice pressing on. Uh, so I'm not asking or hoping that these books were damaged. And now that I say this, I feel like I'm jinxing myself, but I don't want them to be damaged. But if the free comic book day books, let's say, uh, were damaged in transit. They're great books to run a quick press on to just kind of sharpen your skills. Uh, so I'm always looking for those sorts of books with uh, not necessarily books that are damaged, but books that have typical damage so or typical defects that you would see. Um, so that's kind of interesting to me. I've, I've got a lot of old free comic book day books that um, have been like rolled and mashed and have fallen over in bins and so forth. Uh, those are fine to practice on, but they're not realistic. So I really prefer the ones like that have like finger bends or, you know, a little bit of a folded corner, just sort of like the typical, what I would call midtown specials that you would get. So let me get to the unboxing here. I want to figure out what they did with this, this square box and, and kind of, I have a feeling that the precious paper bag with my comics are inside and then probably the free comic book days were just sort of thrown on top is what I'm guessing, but I don't know why this is this was packed in some special way. So let's find out. Let's uh, get to the unboxing and take a look at the comics I got. Okay, so here is that, the, the package that I got from Midtown. It's not even showing up here on camera. Let me just show it to you real quick. It is a, a square box. Right, so uh, I am, I'm definitely concerned that, and I'm like, how do comics fit in the square box? Uh, because I feel like lengthwise, this isn't gonna work out. So I'm super curious and really, really scared <laughs> to 
to open this. Yeah, I mean, last time I checked, comics are not square. So I feel like maybe they're kind of in there this way. And we're about to find out uh, when I open this box here from Midtown Comics. So here we go. Okay, so I'm really, really scared because there are the books. So that's why, um, or I guess that's how they fit. <laughs> uh, yeah, look at this. Look at this madness. This this is how the books arrived. Yeah, I, I don't even know what to say. Um, the, I mean, I I opened. I didn't do anything. I didn't. I didn't open any of the contents inside. There's another angle. Um, just. Yeah, again, bubble wrap that with no bubbles. Paper bag that's absolutely shredded. Uh, yeah, so they they took the comics, just as I described, laid them diagonally in the box, and shipped it. <laughs> uh, I mean, I can already see damaged corners right, right back there. Right in there you can see. So uh, this is going to be fun. It's gonna be fun to look and inspect these books. So, uh, yeah, the paper bag did not help. It's almost like an animal got in there and just started eating the insides of this. Uh, I mean, I've never seen this before, where the, the comics are just stacked diagonally in this box without any protection. I mean, this is a massive online store. Like, and this, okay, I just need to get the comics out of here. Like, it's just, I'm looking to see if if they shipped it with some sort of pet or something that just ate through like this bag is here and it just it looked like it just moved around so much and got absolutely torn and shredded so uh okay some of these are the free comic book days so I'm just gonna grab them real quick and I asked for it I asked hey maybe some will be damaged and I'll press them like an idiot but yeah they're just laying in here oh boy okay just absolutely horrific packaging. The the bubble wrap, again, it just it's it's a plastic bag essentially. The bubbles are gone. The bubbles are here on this side. You can see them here, but then here they're just completely flattened. All right, Midtown. Let's see how we did. <laughs> so there's the stack. Pretty significant stack. I had 16 books. I think I ordered, plus a handful of the free comic book day books. They took the books, dropped them in the square cardboard box, and then just leaned them back and threw a piece of bubble wrap in there. <laughs> Unbelievable. Um, so yeah, no doubt that these are all bent. <laughs> and here I open this thinking, you know what? This is gonna make me happy. I'm, I'm gonna get some back issues that I selected. But yeah, so with, the, with them bent, here I'll show you. So this one is uh, Quests Aside. This is the cover B. And you can see it's not only is it bent, but it's really bent right in there. Now, yes, it could be pressed, but it's now bent so much that it's, I think it's breaking color right in there. Yeah, it's hard to tell with the art, but right there it's breaking color. Um, and also then I have to press all of these. Quest Aside was an interesting story I heard about um, with my, my background in history. Uh, I used to play a particular RPG fantasy type game with a lot of quests in it. I kind of read about it, heard about it, and uh, was like, okay, maybe I'll give this book a try, and ordered not only um, cover A and cover B, but a couple of incentives. So I'm not even going to rebag and board these, because I just kind of need them to air out and lay flat. But uh, there we go. That is uh, Quest Aside, the cover B, and it's just going to get worse. They're all like this. Uh, really nice bag and board that's just, yeah, wow. This is probably the, out of all the Midtown orders, and I've had some really, really rough ones, I think this is shaping up to be the worst. Uh, check this one out. Um, here I'll, so there, it's, it's again, it's bent with multiple problems up and down here. This is Star Wars uh, Halcyon Legacy number three. Uh, yeah, there it is in the light. So it got a messed up corner, fold along the staple. I mean, these are like, I don't know, six, seven, eight point now. And I'm just gonna keep going through them because it's not even worth 
sitting here and talking about it. Uh, I got two copies. Um, yeah, again, you'd say, oh, well, that's a good pressing candidate. Well, no kidding, they they're all are. But look how jacked up that is. Uh, so one of the things that uh, was being talked about right around the, the time that I placed the order, uh, again, is Secret Wars. And it continues to be a topic. Um, it was announced at San Diego Comic-Con that there is officially an Avengers Secret Wars project that is coming. Um, and I collectors, they just keep kind of going back and forth between which Secret Wars series they uh, they want to collect. Is it the Marvel Superhero Secret Wars? Is it this one? Um, I have both. Uh, I'm just, whatever they decide to do, if they introduce Beyonder, great. If they don't, that's fine. Um, this one doesn't look too bad. It's still, it's still roughed up a little bit, but um, this one probably would be okay with a quick press. There's a little bit of a fold right in here, but for the most part, it's just got a... No, I mean, it's it's damaged. <laughs> They're all damaged. It's just bad. Um, and I'm going to take them out of the bag and board because Midtown always says, please photograph these. Um, hopefully, they'll still be able to help me out, even though it's uh, this order's a couple months old. If not, I'll send them the link to this video, and they can watch it for themselves. Put it on the big screen in the warehouse. Here's Secret Wars number eight. So what I was doing at the time was uh, Secret Wars... Um, Doctor Strange, Multiverse of Madness, Incursion, all of that stuff. Um, I just started grabbing any Secret Wars that I could, um, trying to get at least the complete series. Again, lots of damage here, just up and down the spine from the, the damage in transit. So there's that one. Uh, back to the Quest of Side books. I can just show you the others that I got. Yeah, but just, just awful. Just absolutely awful, rough color damage or color rubbing look at the bottom of that corner here I mean that that's at least a three-quarter to one inch just bend right at the bottom I mean these are reader copies so at least I get to read it um, but just that's what happens when you lay books diagonally in a cardboard box now there were a couple of incentives and of course they didn't uh, I don't think they put them in anything special here to protect it um, this is uh, this is a one in five. Pretty cool cover. Um, this one, I think, somehow managed to survive. Again, it definitely still needs a press. Um, and I say that, I don't know if that's breaking color right there or not. Yeah, I can't, yeah, right there, there's a bend. But again, this one could be pressed, most likely. There's no other, like, major damage on it. And then this one, really, really fantastic bag and board here. Like, I mean, seriously, this this is a... This is a company, this is a business, and this is what, this is how they treat comic books. Corner softening, uh, this one somehow looks to, appears to have made it. Uh, no, I said, there, oh, oh, there it is. I was like, where's the damage? Look, look at this up there, just smashed completely. So I give these like somewhere between a seven and a seven five on these grades, just, just awful. And yeah, great, um, great books to practice pressing on for sure. So here are some of those free comic book days. Electric Black, um, The Children of Cain. This is a scout book. So again, this is what I was talking about. So this was damaged right up there. And it's not quite a finger bend. It's worse than that. And so that would be something that I would practice pressing on and see how it turns out. Or I'd practice pressing, the, pressing out the book. So probably what I'll do is I'll take this one, press it out because it has similar uh, defects to the other books in the order. Um, here is Spider-Man Venom, free comic book day number one. Um, so this has, again, that common little fold here, right in the spine, and then also the, sort of the Marvel wrinkling on the pages, as you can see. So this one would be another one. Uh, it's a, no, it's standard size, standard number of pages. So this is, it is, feels so flimsy and thin. So this is a great like quick press candidate right there. All right, uh, another Secret Wars. This is Secret Wars number three. This advertises the Assad Ribic variant, but it's the Coker variant. Um, yeah, still got some of the same. They're all kind of just damaged right in the middle of the book. Um, this one, unfortunately, has a couple of problems. Most likely, this one can be pressed and would survive. It may only max out at a 9.6, though, but I... Love this cover. Emperor Doom on the cover with Sue Storm. Uh, 
you know, whether or not we get Doom in Secret Wars remains to be seen, but uh, trying to get as many of these Secret Wars 2015 as I can. Uh, here is the Midtown exclusive with just seeing the Midtown logo right now is turning my stomach. But uh, yeah, this thing, you can even see on the inside, it's just it's mangled, like all up in here, right there on the page. It's just so disappointing. And I wanted to grab this. It has, it's a great storm cover, but uh, it's, again, it's going to really, I don't want to say it's going to take a miracle. Um, this one doesn't really have any color breaks, but again, every single one of these books needs a press. This one is Secret Wars number one, the cover A. Uh, we've got like a little bit of an issue there, but it's, that one's not bad. This one is a little bit of a thicker, not quite a cardstock cover, but um, it still has something right in there coming across the book. Uh, and then some bindery tearing there. Yeah, so I don't, don't even want to press a book like this. I would probably just give it a 9.4, 9.6. Ms. Marvel number one, oddly enough, I bought it in a, in a VF. <laughs> it's probably in the best condition of all of these books, but we'll see. Um, I, I think I had recommended this book as a value pick. Um, it's got a finger bend. Let's see, why, why is it a VF? A uh, finger bend. <laughs> and I'm like, wh I can't tell if it was a VF before, after, or during transit. I, I don't know. Um, a little bit of a problem there, right there on the spine. Um, this is the big uh, problem, which I don't know, maybe it was a return item or it just folded over, but uh, right across here, there we go, right across the barcode, there's this huge crease. So again, talk about practice. Oh, is this even worth pressing? Look at the back of this book. I know, I bought it in a VF because this is, this is very fine, right? Look at this, um, unbelievable. Like there's there's no way that this book is a VF. Like th this is like a like a 6.0. More Doctor Doom goodness. This is Doctor Doom number one. This is his first solo series. Great cover, great book. Um, yeah, I was like, okay, where is this jacked up? All across the top. So right in there has a me. I mean, these would be great like before and after pressing process like experiments, but. I'm going to have, I mean, it's going to take me a month to press all these books. And then across the top, I mean, just, just awful. Look at that. It's just terrible. Corners, everything. I mean, all these books are somewhere between like a six and an eight five. All right. And at the same time, there was a little bit of like uh, option news for Scout Comics, which I know it seems like there, there's plenty of that. This is Assassin and Son. This was a book that uh, basically just doubled, um, but this probably isn't worth double cover because of that significant horrific impact damage. Uh, again, yes, probably could be pressed out, but I mean, it's hitting every page like it just got smashed down on the corner. Um, spine looks to be intact, so that's a good good thing there. Um, and I got two copies, and these were just at Midtown for cover price. Listed as near mint, but not anymore. Um, this one has just lesser damage, but that corner right in there has a little bit of folding, as does this one there. So this one's in a little bit better shape. This one's I'd probably give a 9.6 or 9.4 um, and could be pressed out with a quick press, and this one would be fine. So that was not too bad. Another free comic book day book. This is Avengers X-Men Eternals Judgment Day, and let's see. And the, the main main thing about this book is uh, Bloodline, uh, you know, making her first appearance here in a free comic book day book. Uh, again, oddly enough, this book was just laying in there, no bag and board, and it looks like it only has a little bit of like a stack increase along the spine, and that's it. Everything else looks fine, so go figure. Okay, so at least... At least this incentive, I mean, again, I wish, I mean, not that they would, but it's too bad not all of the books were mailed in this rigid mailer. Um, I did not pay $60 for this, thank goodness. Um, this is Fantastic Four number one. Uh, great, great Alex Ross cover. Um, it looks like, unless it got a hold of that corner there, um, this book's going to be okay. I'm just going to take this out of the bag and board as well. 
Um, so at least they had the, the smarts to ship this incentive. And this was on sale at a huge discount, so I ended up not paying very much for it. Now, I'll, I'll show you what I paid for all of these books for what they're worth. Yeah, unfortunately, the corner still got clipped just, just slightly there. Um, and it looks like it broke color. So that went through that rigid uh, protector and just clipped the, the corner of that book. It's not terrible. Probably still would be a 9.6 if there was nothing else wrong with it. There's a little bit of a scratch right there. That corner's a little soft. So yeah, we're coming back down into the 9.4 range. Um, just a gorgeous, gorgeous Alex Ross Fantastic Four cover. Amazing. Great renditions of, of each character. Um, especially things like eyebrow or brow area. Crazy. Um, yeah, even this one got... I don't know how it... It must have just just the, the weight of everything because even this has those sort of folded bends. There's several. You know, again, when I press this, because now, now it's probably 9.0, 9 9.2. If it maxes out 9.6, like maybe, maybe not. It really depends. Um, and then the rest are free comic book day books. Nottingham from Mad Cave Studios. Let's see. Marvel Voices. Again, very similar problems with the bends right there that I can kind of practice on. This is a great cover on this one. And then last one is Dark Crisis Special Edition. Um, again, really, really terrible bending, folding, stack, cre stack creases and so forth. So that is the stack right there. That's the stack of books from Midtown Comics. An absolutely horrific disaster. All I can do now is show you what I paid for the books and get a support ticket open with them. And I'd be happy to send them the, the 30 to 50 photos of each book to, sh to prove the damage. I'll probably just send them the YouTube link and just have them watch. So let me get to the order analysis. You can see at least where my head was at and kind of what I was thinking at the time and see what I paid for them. Um, and then we can see if it was worth it or not. Clearly, with the stack of damaged books, it wasn't worth it, but let's look at the numbers anyway. Okay, here is that order from Midtown Comics. Uh, I spent $133.04 on that stack of books. So the weird thing is, they're free comic books, right? The free comic book day books. Um, I didn't list them all in here because it didn't cost me anything. However, they did add $4.44 to ship the books. So they must do some sort of math where... I don't know what their math is, and I wouldn't trust it anyway, but I don't know if I quite realized this when I went to check out, too, that um, they were going to be adding on additional shipping fees just because I ordered free comic book day books. Otherwise, it would have been free shipping. There was $11.15 of tax as well. So what I did is I took the shipping and tax, and I applied them across the uh, 16 books in the order here to make sure that my math uh, adds up to $133.04 for all of the books. Uh, so from a fair market value perspective, just assuming that they're all near mint, which we know they're not, at least from the raw value, I was looking to add uh, $21.31 of value. So a uh, little bit more than a break-even type of order. Carried here, Secret Wars 1, um, I spent $6.51 on that book and currently has a fair market value of $20.99. So a nice $14.48 uh, value gain there. Um, the quests aside, number one, um, I $23.47, what I spend on that book, um, it's worth $9.37, so that was a, that pretty much offset The Secret Wars. Um, I don't remember what I heard about that book other than it was an interesting read, um, it was not heavily ordered, and so I saw they were available at Midtown, so I grabbed them up. They're still available at Midtown, and they're also available other places. I certainly don't endorse Midtown Comics and would not recommend buying books from them, but uh, if you wanted to take a chance, they're there. Uh, so again, I I whiffed on that one. So for, for whatever I did on Secret Wars, like uh, spending $10.77 on the Midtown exclusive, it has value of $18.95, Secret Wars number three was kind of a break-even around 13 bucks. 
Uh, seven and eight I got essentially for cover price, um, and they're running a little bit more than that. Halcyon Legacy is still around cover price. The other quests aside, cover A's and cover B's are still uh, cover price. Ms. Marvel number one, eight dollar book. I spent five dollars fifty one cents. The book is horrible. It's in, it's in such the the condition is horrible, I should say, on that one. Um, Fantastic Four. Uh, even with the discount, so I bought that book that was a, it was labeled and priced by Midtown for sixty dollars. Um, I got it for sixteen dollars and ten cents, so a really nice discount. But it's only worth fifteen bucks. Um, I still love it. I love the it's a great Alex Ross Fantastic Four cover. Uh, Doctor Doom number one spent about ten bucks is worth eleven, and then the Assassins and Son, like I mentioned, it kind of doubled in cover price. I paid cover. It's worth eight dollars and forty cents. So that's where the value came from. I'll do the my grade stuff just for kicks, just to show you again what why did I do this? What what was the reasoning behind it? Um, clearly, these books aren't anywhere near even nine four. Uh, the ones that uh, have some value again, Doctor Doom number one. Um, most of them are zero, and then if I were to flip them all nine eight, which again this is a little heartbreaking for me because I could have had some really nice books in this order. Um, I would have stand to gain. $374.11. So I feel like it was a smart order, uh, smarter than maybe even a pre-order, even with those quests aside, books having no no graded value. Nobody's graded those books. Um, Secret Wars number one, still holding up at $229 and a 9.8. Uh, Doctor Doom number one at $99. Assassin and Son at 60 bucks in that 9.8. Ms. Marvel number one, I bought at VF, so... I was just hoping I could press it up into a 9.8. That one's $85. So some nice value in here. Secret War 7, 65 bucks. Those would have been the grades, but now uh, they're nothing or somewhere, like I said, in that 6 to 8.5 range, which is typically what I grade books that have that sort of significant damage. What am I going to do now? Uh, I have completely suspended all of my ordering from Midtown Comics, and I did that before I even opened this this order. Um, I'm not ordering from them, at least for the foreseeable future, but this is kind of what happened to me three years ago, two, two, three years ago, where I had a really, really good run, and I was getting a lot of good books from Midtown. A lot of them were 9.8s. They were some of my very first CGC submissions had books that I bought from Midtown Comics. So there's part of me that's still... I still feel like there's a chance, right? It's like going and and you're gambling and, and you're losing, but you remember that one time that you won and you just want to continue, you know, putting up with the abuse, I guess. So I'm not ordering from them actively really anymore. It would have to be a really special case. And, and I'll be honest, the website kind of makes it enticing to order from them. I mean, it's a, it's a decent website, um, you'll, you'll see those, those sales that they drop and, oh, I don't know. Um, but I have not ordered anything, uh, from them since May of 2022. Uh, so th I have this order that I just opened plus a couple of other orders that I still have yet to open, but that's it. I have nothing else outstanding from Midtown. I am going to contact them. I will let them know that I just opened this order. I realized I placed the order on May 10th. And it is late July, uh, early August. So I do understand that, that I, I'm assuming this risk by holding on to the books and reporting it so late. They may just say, hey, too much time has passed. You know, we, we can't take these books back. And I respect that and understand their policy. But I may even send them the link to this video and just say, please, for every other collector that is buying from you, don't do what you did to me to them. So if there's anything I can do for you, I am going to reach out to them. I am going to send them photos uh, and, and let them know just the, I didn't take a photo. I may go back and take like a screen cap of the video if I can of the actual box sitting there. And I feel like everything I was sort of uh, predicting about books being damaged or the books laying sideways. I'm like, seriously, how, how do books, how do comic books fit in a square box? It was all true. I was right. So that was the order. I do appreciate you hanging in there with me. Uh, I feel like I'm a, on a little bit of a, a bad luck streak. Uh, some of it's been my fault with the books that I'm choosing. Uh, this order was not my fault. I feel like I chose decent books, and I, I would have loved to have 
you know, gotten that full run of the Secret Wars books, uh, the Fantastic Four with Alex Ross and so forth. I can keep going on and on about the books. But I feel like my confidence is still there to choose the right books or to buy the right comic books and, and invest and, and speculate and do all of that, but not with this sort of risk. I cannot assume any more risk by ordering from Midtown Comics anymore. Uh, and, and, you know, as somebody who buys a lot of books online, I have to find new places. Uh, there's a lot of other places that people suggest. There's tons of uh, Shopify-based comic book stores out there that you can get back issues from. Um, I'm going to have to just start really looking around for, for new places to shop from. Uh, you know, I'm placing these orders. They're over $100. They're multiple books. I'm sure there's, you know, many other online shops that would appreciate my business because Midtown doesn't. Thank you for watching. Happy collecting. And see you next time.